appreciate and promote the aesthetic value of talent. In this modern world, we have a tendency to kill talent, or at best, suppress it, which is destructive. We destroyed our middle class, triggered our great, great crisis, and then flowed mediocrity. We have witnessed the chilling consequences of the years. I trust the foregoing observations eloquently explain our own humble efforts to expose talent, even at the risk of being alone watching the workers. One I must I don't say God help. In conclusion, let me remember that this is essentially a book convention. We have a host of great titles to choose from from the foyer. We'll unveil and launch a magazine to fortify the exposure of talent, but the process will be incomplete without the backup of beautiful books to complement and accompany the takeaway package. In this regard, I remember that on the 24th of February last, I woke up to the shocking news of the death of my author and friend, Akin Ademi Ajose Adeyogo. He was one of the pioneer celebrants of the main of observation of what we were doing. The biographical masterpiece of my dream Julius J.I.C. Taylor amplified his own amplified by his own exalted status and liberal luminary, and done their work to promote bounds of culture. The book, which you might have seen, backs up our magazine this year. A new book of poetry that attracted the award, Once Upon a, a Bloom's Day, by the by Chief Manichi de Ross, who is here with us, was published last year by the third the Gospel of COVID 19. This author will be formally presented to the public later this year. As publishers, we are in giving our own copies of the package for our guests today. Two additional books which we feel will entertain and which people we believe will treasure, join the list. So you have a package of four books and one magazine to go home with. Profoundly for your attendance and patronage. And to also say that over the, from the first um, outing we had, this one, it was made possible by people like yourselves. And I have the intention to continue to do it because it isn't easy to find talents and promote them and get universal acclaim the way they should. And it is because of the support of people like you that we're able to keep going. God help me, we'll be here next year as well. And um, on this point, I'll have to take my leave of you and let the things be next. I congratulate the publisher and I wish greater propagation of this magazine and more development. Please, let's put our hands together and make welcome our premier our dean, Dame Dai Lyson. Maybe I could stand the protocol for you. Let me start with the chairman, the awardees of today, let me mention the convener, and the past awardees. I very much once again to stay here and uh, distinguished uh, members of the high team, ladies and gentlemen. I would not have spoken, but I haven't had a historical crack that the chairman chose to go through, starting with our attempt as a nation. For independence and the fact that very spiritual and scriptural it was the word that was spoken at the time of creation so the same word that our foremost national leaders adopted in securing the independence of the nation from our colonial masters i have never done that making before in my life and it's true 
It's very powerful. Very powerful. Because you need to look at it. Nigeria did not fire one single bullet mm. to win its independence. Mm. You can't see the same of many countries globally, not just in Africa. But well, continentally, I mean, America, the foremost country today, you remember the world went through. First, from the British government, then even between themselves, between the south and the, and the north, and then fighting to free the slaves for them to become industrialized. We didn't do any of that. I didn't know today whether that was the best thing or whether it's uh, today comes. Maybe if we had fought, we would have appreciated our independence for But when you go back to what you said, when you see, and I'm sure a lot of people of us have watched the videos of men like, you know, Tafawa Balewa, his first speech at the United Nations on behalf of Nigeria, you have to see him. Don't tell me another cannot. No, 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 no. You have to see his accent, intonation, the way he put it together. I mean, my scientist is the man that was just murdered like that. This man stood on the river, stayed and held the walls, fell bound. No, no, I was part of Nigeria. Every time I watch it, I never We do not need to talk of our law. That is the man who lives, who thrives, who exists in the world. You listen to him, you are motivated. You want to go and aspire higher. That is the man I would love. Then let, let us talk about Sikiwe. That was a man who romances words. I mean, it's a man who, when he's speaking, um, let me not go the other way, when he's speaking, you, you want to love him. Nigeria has been blessed with men of words. Not coming to others, like the man who are here in Hosono, we are dedicating this award. The man who rests under six, and let us remember that under mm -hmm. six in those days, mm -hmm. we learned to pay the of today, we don't expect that. So, this is why I got in here today. And when I listened to the convener uh, speaking of his motivation, efforts, and then he has done this, would be my second appearance in this house. Each time I come, I need more hope for Nigeria, probably, and Germany. Men like him make me more hopeful for this country. That there are men who go out steadfastly, consistently, never given up, and they cause they believe in. We all know his history, we know his accidents from when he was in school and the book he wrote about this. And you see that he's consistently still doing this, believing that the world must live, the world must not die. It's something that we all should say. Please let's give him a hand. Whatever fields are uh, exempt, they also contribute towards this world. It's not what we rebuild in this nation. We need to wrestle this country back. Once or twice, I've had calls to appear on the program of a very notable gentleman here in the media, uh, Mr. Craig. And the kind of punchy question he asks, the kind of drive, the kind of hope is asking that Nigeria needs to ginger to be able to come up and be like the rest of the nation. I believe that if this kind of minds should aggregate more of more time and expand their reach and network, maybe finally there will be hope for this country. Because a nation, a person is built on hope. Hope is that you want things to be better. You wish they will be better. You work towards getting, just making it better, and eventually you succeed in creating a better country. We all deserve a better country. And the attendees, those almost who have attended to an existing post of all. Uh, first of all, uh, let me congratulate the winners of this award uh, today. Uh, sometime last year, I had emailed uh, my anthology of poems to Mr. Dilibe Uyema. Um, it's a collection of poem I have had for more than 20 years plus. And it never just occurred to me that I could turn it into a book. Somebody encouraged me. And one thing led to the other. Eventually, when Mr. Uyema got it, and after reading through, said my book was worth being given the award of Tutuola Palm. Of poetry. I said, what? What is that? How does 
that's even possible. I never thought of such. It's something I wrote um, just out of youthful exuberance, exploring the various themes associated with human experience. And for him to find it to be something uh, so exciting and interesting, then there must be something to this. So when he told me that the award for this year was going to go uh, in this venue, and it was going to hold today, I was in far away Eastern Nigeria, uh, where my listeners took me to, but I said I must be here to see this event live and direct. So, um, to cut this short, I want to congratulate Mr. Dilibe Oyema for keeping the passion, being consistent, in this. For over 40 years plus, he has been at the forefront of encouraging Nigerians, publishing books, and giving a voice to younger generation of Nigerians who wouldn't have had the opportunity to have their books published uh, offshore. In this country where you really have to press forward to be heard, it takes a lot of tenacity for somebody to keep doing this for this period of time. Over the years, we have lost our reading culture. Priority has shifted from creativity to the political space. Like one of the speakers here said today, pre-independence and post-independence, Nigeria was dominated with people of a creative mind. Journalists, lawyers, accountants. People who were able to mesmerize the crowd with the words to speak during political campaign. People with a vision, people with political ideology that you could see was leading this nation to some place. But in the political dispensation of today, it seems to me that we have lost it one way or the other. So we need to re imbue in us the need to revive the reading and the writing culture, to teach people the beauty of the word, to enshrine in the upcoming generation the need to write. To write. A young person sending you a message today, composed as a text message, when you read it, you virtually be pushed to cry because of the inconsistency of the message that is being conveyed to you. So I want to see a situation where Mr. Dili Boyema will move this beyond what we see here. Let's have regular poetry competition. Let's have regular reading competition, whether it's in Lagos, in Abuja, where you gather people and actually see people reading with passion, with enjoyment. This, in my own opinion, will leave a long-lasting impression on the younger generation that there is something in the feel of the word. Like uh, one of the speakers here said, the word was what was used in creation. So it has to stand for something. So let's make this to be bigger than what we have seen here today. Come next year, we should network out amongst ourselves. Let's uh, set up some sort of working group where people can mobilize within the sphere, the sphere of influence in which you're present. If you are in the business sector, try to mobilize your successful business people to come here. If you are in, in, in the political space, try and mobilize. I do believe that if we work together, we should be able to have an event of a bigger magnitude, a deeper impact than what we have had here today. Thank you very much. Please don't rest on your oars. Keep on doing this. At some point in this country, you'll be recognized and appreciated for what you have done. Thank you very much. Especially when you don't know the people Or when they don't know you. You feel scared. Because you may not know what to say. However, I'm happy that somebody here that knows me, that knows very well, Professor Arukuyo. We were together somewhere in the university before I left there. So because it's yeah, here, I feel confident to talk among them more. I also want to say one thing again, that uh, 
our big man sent on. We have been hearing about him when we were children. And when you get a recognition by somebody like that, initially you will feel um, um, confident, or at times you feel afraid. And what you have done showed something. Whatever you do at do, continue to do it. You may think nobody is looking at you. I wrote a book, I have a copy here, with some poetry. I wrote poems on all the states in Nigeria, and all the state capitals, and some other uh, towns and villages. I wrote them long ago, and it was about 10 years ago I was able to just put them together. And publish. I good enough, Professor Arubi was one of those people I gave complimentary copies, copy data. Now, there was a time I started sharing them on Facebook, some of those uh, poems. And uh, some time ago, our big man, Oyama, just chatted with me because we are friends on Facebook. He said, You have seen my poem on Lagos that should he publish it? I said, Well, it's well and publish it. And they told me to be inside the magazine, the magazine. So I want to use that one to tell us that whatever we want, let us keep on doing it. The recognition will come one day. And this project, I call this one a project that is trying to carry out. I want to pray that it will not stop. It will continue. We will hand it over to our children and to our children's children to the glory of God and to the betterment of our country. Thank you. Uh, what I said is a privilege it's because when I was in medical school, they told us of one of the youngest professors in Nigeria in the 80s, named Professor Ashuri. <laughs> today is remarkable to meet you here today. Wow. wow. I drive to Ikeja and I see medical arts. These are foremost senior colleagues who adventure into IV fertilization process, which is still involved in today. It's one of those veterans we to know. When I receive a phone call from our Leader in the family, Professor Timothy Asobele, about this. And I happen to be one of the family leaders in Lagos. I said, What should I write about him? I had many of his books, with one particular one, not even poetry aspect. He said, A visual cover in the next 100 years. This book is like a dictionary to me that I'm still reading. And it's a great pleasure to see that it's being honored today. But I want you to know that there are still many others. The younger ones. I remember when my daughter was in a GSS 1, she wrote a book that was never published. And I know that there are many others that are looking for people who can tap into them. I kept them in my computer system to be. But as from today, I know what to do. When he was in Paramount Skills 6, they asked her to write a poem. She wrote a poem on the day we got wedded. And that is still memorable till today. I want to encourage the publisher also to go on how to hunt for talents, even right from the primary, secondary school. And if the person we are celebrating today could do that with Stalasis at that time, 
which means there is still hope for the younger generation that inspired to do more. We came from a royal family in Kaba. This is a great privilege for us. And one of our princes here, which have been mentioned, and I know we want to say something, Professor Arukolo, of which we are proud of today. And I believe, going forward, that I will continue to try my best to support this institution like this, organization like this. And we want more to continue just like our chief, Kelly Martin, has spoken. That it's high time we use this powerful word written to make a change, not just in our generation, in the generation to come. Thank you very much. Don't make me to stand on the existing protocol. I am Ogenika Mifa What is happening today just remind me of what happened. What happens annually when we are remembering the, I mean, organizing the Fafumwe Foundation. First, we started at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. The crowd, and gradually, gradually, the whole thing started drinking. You can imagine if it were a common, I'm sorry to use that word, a counselor. A politician. They are actually fighting a different cause, but you can imagine if something of this magnitude is happening, and this is what we have. It is unfortunate. A nation that neglects its youth has no future. Why do I say youth? We have to catch our our Noel Lawrence young, that is, we have to start producing them if possible from the cradle so that we have that, imbibe that culture of what? Literacy. It's dying. It's dying. Mama, uh, a dying life could bear me out. She is one of those. Yes. What are we, what, are, what is the legacy we are equating to generation coming behind us? This is, uh, I just want to identify with that. This is, if a medical doctor can refer to the import of the world, that is the Bible too. In the beginning was the world. Nigeria won its independence on the world, on the back of the world. And what is literary? Isn't it a compilation of words? What is poetry? We are not using it. We are not using it. We want to remember people like Akintana Esther, even when they, do you want to t t talk about that oracy? The oracy skills of uh, Akintana, uh, Papa O, Papa uh, Namdi Aziki, we, we, we have lost them. We have lost them, but they keep on living in our hearts because they have soul seeds that keeps on germinating. But where do we? Uh, my professor, I happen to have passed through Professor Asabele during my master's degree about 20 something years ago in the university. Anytime you get to faculty from 6 to 6 p.m., Professor Asabele will be there. And not that was a professor you would, he will, I mean, I have had cause to shed tears. Professor Sobele was spanking with one hand and will embrace with the other hand. Embracing not that is a professor that I can vouch for, would not hunt for any, anybody's cut. Uh, likewise, Professor Simpson, but Professor Simpson, if you want to mess around, he will tell you. So, you know those girls, lazy, and it, why are they lazy? It's because we don't have the culture of what? Of reading. Reading skills, literacy skills is dying. That explains why what you are not able to sit down to read to comprehend, it is not possible for you to do what? It cannot be part and parcel of you. We cannot ingest it. So please, parents, let us. Let us invite the skills of reading, writing into our children. It will, it will, it is a legacy. 
Professor Sabele, I have never, never seen. He retired in August. In August? I'm sorry. He retired in August. Professor Sabele would not go on retirement until January because he had about 10, 10 professor, I mean, 10 uh, PhD dissertation student, uh, students that were yet to, to, I mean, to graduate. So he needed to help stand by them until they were able to. That, I mean, he did not only focus on his writing skills, he kept on promoting others. I am one. I, I didn't know when I was doing my master's, he has already taken my dissertation already to Canada. That's what he went on sabbatical and leave. as far as his concerned, I was actually one of his best students then. He has already gone to work ahead of me to take my work to international letters. I'm a fellow of the Society of Nigerian Theatre Artists. I cherish my OOM, but I love the academic award, being a fellow of it was given to me by the 36 universities, the universities. I cherish that very much. Why am I saying this? I am very glad that that Chief Kenny, Kenny, Martin. Kenny Matthews is a politician and he stands here and he admits and tells us that we should take care of our intellectual legacy. It's a great paradox that Nigerians put so much premium on education, and yet it appears to me we're anti-intellectualism, and we're suffering from it. Because everything is bling, bling, bling. We go for the lowest hanging fruits. And that's, it's not paying for us. There's no profit in it. We have about two or three professors here. And we have this event which should be packed. And so, and why isn't it packed? If we had the president or minister of so and so here now, everybody will come so that you can look gaze at their faces. It is very sad. I think those of you who are industrialists, who are businessmen, and you're here because you know the import of what this event is, I hope that all of us will be angels, so to speak, to events like this. We are in our society, we are encouraging things like Big Brother, whatever, and they're walking away with millions and we're suffering from lack of funds to encourage us. Thank you for coming. We're, we're, we have a dearth of funds to encourage and to develop our intellectual peace. And we know we're not going to go anywhere. You are my elders, tell me. We're not going to go anywhere unless we actually nurture this, because it is the mind that builds everything. Mm. We have completely neglected our minds. And I think our job is to find a way of refocusing really our, ourselves, our minds, our attention on what we need to do. Because it is the mind, it is ideas that creates fortune success. So why are we neglecting that? So this event, I was telling, I, I wrote to um, a dear delivery. We've got to do some. How many members of the media do we have here? Well, I represent the media. Two. My brothers will agree with me that that's not enough. If we know what our priorities are in this country, especially now, where we're all scrambling and fighting for loot rather than how to develop our fortunes. I would imagine that if we were doing some Nollywood, something or the other, you, you know, the media would be there.
because it's all gloss and glitz. I would like us to, uh, uh, for the media, I put this challenge between the politicians rather than the people. I'm sorry, with due respect, sir. <laughs> Our politicians hold us to ransom. They have forgotten that a country, that it's not a monarchy we're running here. They're working for the people. And if they're not looking after the collective, they're ruining the country. And it's not about the north, the west, or east. As long as we don't have the philosophy of looking after the collective, of what happens to everybody. And the media, then rushes after them because everybody is waiting for when their container comes home. It's not going to work for us. And the little woman who is struggling to raise her child, to send them to school, and everything. Nobody is glamorizing those people as doing the work of building this nation. So can we reprioritize our, uh, 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 what really this country must, must be to us? Thank you. Uh, and I, I want to say how proud I am to be a day. <laughs> Congratulations to the uh, uh, for this, and I, I, I'm sure you will be great ambassadors, not just for this, but for the intellectual soul of this country. We do need to save ourselves. Thank you very much. The magic name of Tito Bayo, I esteem personage. As an outstanding achiever, is to be crowned this day with a Tikola palm for poetry. As she possibly defining her personification of poetry in motion, it is striking, it is a striking fact that a feature of her fame is rooted in her indelible passion to uplift the cause of the underprivileged, especially the women folk and the youth who are the most vulnerable in society. Tobago has pursued that duty with untiring zeal and recorded stolen triumph in this regard. It is nonetheless a passion to see an Africa without poverty, to see mothers Africa's daughters strive in their chosen endeavors. To that end, she has contributed with vigorous public enlightenment programs towards the eradication of poverty, early child mortality, improvement of education for the girl child, and improvement of access to health care facilities for women and children in Africa. As a result of such humanitarian work in country Nigeria, she was awarded the World Peace Gathering, the World Peace Diplomatic Organization, a committee with the United Nations. Tito Baigo has since garnered skills and presentation, organizing and participating in a host of public lectures in sustainable development goals under the auspices of the United Nations Information Center in Lagos, Nigeria. Notable among these was at the 2016 National Summit and Ford's International Colloquium themed Human Security violent extremism and radicalization, seeking sustainable solutions. Tito Baigo organized that colloquium to celebrate the 79th birthday of Nigeria's former president, Chief Olusha Obasanjo. Soon after, in November 2017, she presented a paper at a public lecture on the eradication of gender-based violence in Nigeria, a United Nations Sustainable Development Group organized by Women Arise and the United Nations Information Center, Vegas. With her well-grounded experience in primary and secondary data collection, she was able to write a number of research papers and reports, especially in the area of sustainable development for developing countries. Tito Bible's journal of arc like film plays has a formidable backup of antecedents that mockingly taunt our mesmerized admirers. 
and not just a pretty face, you know. She's a doctoral student of economics from the University of Lagos, Nigeria. She graduated with merit from the University of Manchester, United Kingdom, with MSc in Development Economics. She holds MBA in Marketing from the University of Lagos and a bachelor's degree in Agricultural Economics from the University of Agriculture at Belkota, Nigeria. To the glory of God in service to humanity, Tito Baigos became Tito Obaiko became a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Portfolio Management IBM and a fellow of the Institute of Company and Commercial Accountants ICCA. She has recorded an 11 year she has recorded an 11 year working experience in banking operations, covering treasury operations, bank business development, relationship management, oil and gas downstream banking services, credit appraisal, institutional banking corporate banking, retail banking, and micro, micro credit operations. As we speak, Tito Baiko actually took the position of a branch manager in the banking industry after serving several banks, from where she moved into the world of sustainable development, where she established a non-profit, non-governmental organization with a very familiar name of Charity and Development Initiative, CBI. This organization was created for the express purpose of empowering women and youth through social and development initiatives and with a vision to see Africa without poverty. As its founder and executive director, Tito Abaigo was nourished with a sense of fulfillment after CBI empowered over 100 women and youth. Fired by this commendable record, she moved on and founded Pinnacle Empowerment Initiative. This was a microfinance non-governmental organization dedicated to the eradication of poverty amongst impoverished women to the end of making women self-reliant and self-sufficient. Tito Paiko's many accomplishments by Marx with the establishment of the Smart Book Club which was registered yeah. in the Nigeria's Public Affairs Commission as a non-profit organization. She founded a club with a singular purpose to promote the reading culture amongst women, laying emphasis on the need to provide a conducive atmosphere for personal development, networking, and socializing. But subsequent few years, the sky became the limit for the Smart Book Club and the name Tito Baigo was uplifted to cloud nine. Tito Baigo's 15th century heroic predecessor, John of Arc, was unfortunately burned at the stake on May 1431 at the height of a youthful exuberance, age 19. A 21st century successor, Tito Baigo flourishing with the same love of her people in philanthropic triumph. We run us turn on the pedestal, not at the stake, this day of 10th July 2021 to receive the Tutola Pump Poetry Award. To have Bible's poetry personified and these can attest to the glory of God in the service to the month. This one is presented for you. I have a very clear teacher, the Bible, the glory of God in the service to the month. Good words are well pronounced. Appreciate it, my boss is here. The Delta Club, on the occasion of the third profile, Confirms the tutorial um, for poetry on Dean Tito Obiago. Obiago, in recognition of outstanding stewardship to God and humanity on the tenth day of July.
She's a jolly good fellow, and she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us, and so say all of us. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. And so say our lovers. Hip hip hip, hooray! Hip hip hip, hooray! Hip hip hip, hooray! Okay, we'll turn the mic over to you, Nama. I'm the chairman and other distinguished members of the high table. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to start an existing protocol. I will start by thanking the Almighty God that has made it possible for all of us to gather in this freedom park today with health of body and mind to participate in this august occasion of the third outing of the annual literary awards of the Tutola Palm for Poetry by Delta Publications, Nigeria Limited led by the identifiable CEO, Sir Jalibi Oyema. I'm overwhelmed with joy that the awarding authorities found me suitable to be a recipient of this award. The award will inspire me to work harder, knowing that there are some people that are watching me and appreciating my efforts. When I first learned that I would be receiving this award on the same podium with one of Africans leading academic, and one of my mentors in the University of Lagos, Professor Timothy Samuel Olajide Asoweli. It crossed my mind to seek a postponement of my own award, maybe till next year, as a mark of honor for him. But on a second thought, I decided that it would be better that I take the privilege of the happenstance and appear at the same platform one of the most popular lecturers and mentors of students in the UNILAC community. So I say to you, Professor, congratulations, congratulations on your award and many other awards that you have deservedly received in Nigeria from a grateful nation for your long service in the academic world. Um, professor is not here today, but um, he's my yeah. mentor, and um, he's a father, and a father figure. I would like to also thank my family, friends, and colleagues in my different business and charitable organizations who have stood by me all these years. There are some of them here, Ada, Adese, my best friend. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. And she happens to be the vice president of Smart Book Club. Um, it's a club that we founded three years ago. Yes, and this one is also a member. We founded Smart Book Club three years ago because we realized that there's a gap. Um, Nigerians are not reading, and we need to um, encourage that culture of reading. And just like Madam said, our legend, Madam Bing, Taiwo Ajayi, like said, said, um, and the other woman also said that we need to catch them young. And this is one of the things that we also do in Smart Book Club. We go around schools and we have a project called the Project the Public School Library. And the Project Public School Library. What we do is that we um, get books and donate to the public schools just to encourage children to read. Not just reading their, their textbooks, but they need to read all genre books. They need to read storybooks. We have beautiful story um, written by Nigerian authors, African authors. They're fantastic stories written by Nigerian authors. So we go around public schools and we beef up their library. We give them books to encourage um, the reading culture. And if you want to do that, you need to catch them when they're young. And this is one of the projects that is very dear to our heart. And it's one of the projects that we take very seriously in Smart Book Club. Smart Book Club is three years, uh, was three years in April, and um, we're growing. And um, last, just two nights ago, some one of us just sent a message to me and said she has published her book. 
just by setting up you know a book club we have raised one writer amongst us we need to continue to encourage we need to continue to encourage that reading culture we don't want to lose you know the, the that culture of reading in the in the advanced world creative minds are taken seriously and because they are the ones who actually you know make things happen um, even the Nollywood, I would encourage them to adapt some of the books written by African authors, Nigerian authors, and adapt them into movies. There's so many fantastic storylines that you can adapt into movies. It's um, something that I think um, the Nollywood should look into. So um, I dedicate, I like this, okay, I would like to also thank my family again friends and colleagues in my different business and charitable organizations who have stood by me all these years as veritable pillars of strength. I promise solemnly that I will not let them down or let down those who have given me this award. I dedicate this award to my family who have seen me through thick and thin. I will forever cherish their love and kindness to me. Once again, I thank everyone who have left the businesses for the, for the day to come to bear witness and encourage me and Professor Soberly on this beautiful day. Thank you very much and God bless you. I was here in the India and unfortunately um, he was able to make this morning due to flight delays. Um, what I can say from um, growing up and living with my dad for so many years is one, his dedication and intelligence to work and his passion for his books. Um, also, the fact that he's got very special for his books. Growing up, I know I've attended a lot of um, book publications, and his um, pride and his zeal when it also comes to creative, the creatives, and also encouraging us in book writing from enrolling us in book clubs, and his passion for it. Uh, I can't, I can't think of a better way to honor him because, to be honest, if you look at growing up, you want to get my father a gift. Yeah, automatically you're thinking, okay, what book can I get him? So growing up, he has always, always um, been so passionate about words and so passionate about writing. Like, I feel like if you're talking about most important things to him, people go down there his books, and I'm not um, kidding or just trying to say because of the occasion. That's what I have um, noticed living with him growing up for so many years. And um, I would like to uh, thank um, Thank you, Mr. Um, Dilibi, um, for finding my father fitting to honor him with this um, award. Um, he's shown so much drive, and I can see um, in both of them their passion for um, literary works. And I'm very grateful, very grateful for the opportunity. I thank everyone for being here. I thank everyone, and God bless you. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, because it has to do with what we are with at the Smart Book Club, which um, Mr. Biko spoke about. You know, this um, expands, you know, to the places where it should be. And not just um, the few of us that are here. Um, I'm hoping that this goes, you know, right into um, different corners in Nigeria, into schools, um, right from primary to secondary to the university to different workplaces, um, to all the corners in this country. Honestly, this is amazing. It's my first time attending an event like this. And like we have all echoed, like we have all alluded to, this is um, one of the blocks that we need to put from one step to the other in order to build this country all over again. I think there's an opportunity and here, this is a fantastic platform. I think we should all encourage you know, people that we know, um, people that are not aware of this. We need to you know, bring them to the realization that there is something like this. And indeed, there is a chance for our country to you know, get better, yes, to be uplifted, to become the country that we all look forward to. Um, I would like to say thank you once again to the organizers and congratulations to my darling friend and um, the other awardee. Thank you. To stand up.
better system <coughs> protocol. I just want to chip in a little word of hope as far as Nigeria is concerned. There is hope. And uh, I want to tell a little story. When I was in the secondary school, in our form three, a very troublesome member of the class was rusticated. And uh, he left in form three. Then we went to form four. From form four, we went to form five. And when we were in form five, something happened. We, were, we went to the biology laboratory, and as we were coming out of the laboratory to go back to the classroom, we saw a brand new Miriafori car, brand new. And in my little village called town then, that was unusual. And this car was strategically parked behind the four for Jaropi of the principal. So naturally, we were wondering how could this vehicle have gotten here? And suddenly, whom did we see? We saw Michael, the chap that was rusticated in Form 3. He was the one that brought this car to the school. And he intentionally blocked the car of the principal who masterminded his being rusticated. And he came out, that's Michael, and was given, was it 50 naira or whatever it was, 50 naira would have been too much then. I'm talking of uh, uh, the late uh, 60s to, to every member of my class. After that, he left. And then we got back to the classroom and we were asking ourselves, why do you have to read when you can make money? Here is Michael. Michael came back just after two years that he went to Kaduna. He came back with a brand new car, the light we didn't see in the town. That's number one. Number two, many of the servicemen that came back from the war front, the riffraffs, the flusams, and the jetsams of the society who went to join the army, they came back. The fathers, the notables in the society that we had always given regard to, these people beat them up. I remember a specific occasion when one of them alleged that an elder had had an affair with his wife. So he dug a hole and said the elder must have sex with the ground. It was as bad as that. What am I driving at? The Nigerian Civil War and the oil have changed the values of the society to such an extent that the society became turned upside down. Things fell apart. And that is what, this is the degradation, the moral degradation that we are seeing today. Children are no more interested in going to school. See how many students failed work. This last one, it was massive. And it is, and you see, what happens is that not uh, the badly trained teachers are training other children. But why do I say there is hope? There is hope because oil is going. May God preserve our lives for the next 10 years. 
and we are going to see, we are going to witness the redemption of Nigeria. The oil that has gotten into our brain and has made us to be, what am I going to say, drunk, to get drunk, like the wine drinkers of the Mosquito Oil Oil is going because it is losing its value. It, it's very soon, the, 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 the cost of production would be so, compared to what comes from oil, will make it non-attractive. So what's going to happen? We are going to go back to what we used to be. And then we will begin to think properly once again. Thank you very much. So that's the hope I said I yeah. see for Nigeria. Just see what about Professor Asobele. He's the one that brought me here. Across Dr. Asobele, I wish you were here today from the family because we belong to the same family. The second contact was that I was privileged to be the publisher of his first book was um, ever, and that is Gamji. My company, my publishing company called Foundation Educational Services Limited published. I was the editor and the publisher of the book. It was when I went to present the book to him in Unilag that he said, look, Darren, I think you should go beyond your first degree. Come and do your masters. Mm -hmm. well, by the grace of God, I was already established then. And I said, okay. So I, my first university was the University of Bali. So I went to a Unilag and I did my masters under him. He was the supervisor of my thesis. And not only that, before the results of my master's degree came out, Dr. Asobele was then the, the, uh, in charge of the postgraduate school, and himself and the HOD of French department, they had already enrolled me for my doctorate degree, so I started my doctorate even before the results of my master's came. And, uh, I classed Dr. Asopele among one of the greatest, I mean, among the greatest intellects of our times. <laughs> Professor Ashimu said something the other time, and that is that the Pawan drinker was written overnight. That's Dr. That's Professor Asopele for you. He would turn out a book of several hundreds of pages, they would just say in one week's time. We, he is writing one now that um, I'm, I'm retired from the university, that I hope I will be published. We are working on it. 700 pages he has already come. And I said to Nathan, okay, he's that prolific and a wonderful writer and a motivator of people. Thank you very much for the opportunity. You can people that yes I know there are a lot of things going on out there on Instagram and we are carried away. We need to I'm a young woman who is passionate about my nation. I'm very passionate. So let's go to Instagram. They have met people who had brilliant young people on Instagram. So let's not go to Instagram to um, check the latest video and everything. Let's go and check for other things. And that is why sometimes when I talk to people in my age bracket, it's like I'm saying another thing. They feel like I'm too old. Please, I just want to encourage you young people because I will be having. Let's just go to Instagram to look for other things. There are so many things educative on Instagram. Instagram is a very good thing. I joined, I joined last and I'm not regretting. That is just what I want to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's uh, because of it to say the word of thanks. And I cannot say the word without thanking the chairman for agreeing to take this role. And I'm happy that not only has he taken the role, but he's been a source of inspiration and a major motivator all through the course of this event. Thank you very much. I must thank the convener who has taken all the efforts to put all of us together. 
seriously, annually, putting this together. Uh, may God continually bless your efforts and empower you. I must say thank you to the audience, especially. Uh, without you, we are not here today. Because the combination of what you have been doing over the time made today possible. We are here today because of the things we have been doing over the years consistently and properly. I'm happy that this lady standing here representing the balance of gender and coming in itself with my chairs. Because I'm always looking out for Actually, I have a twin as a, as a sister. So you can understand why I have that bias. I must thank Professor Asobeni, a wonderful meeting. The man that is known globally to bring people up. There is nothing that can make him others. The makers are the ones they are the best in society because without them, they are no society. I want to thank him uh, all the things I've heard about him today. I think we're very, very proud. I must go back to the lady, um, Tito Bible. And you're trying to bring that and bring your reading culture in. And I'm happy that your motivational um, dynamics have this. I've met somebody of the next generation to say, Look, I want to be there. I'm happy that somebody of the next generation is telling others, Don't just go into fashion and music on this channel. They're very powerful social media for making things happen globally. Social media has been the reason for changes in nations, has been the reason for bringing out the makers of nations. All those generations that made Dubai, they are the, they are the Instagram generation. And I'm happy that what you are doing is now bringing up some people. And I will fall on you. This one's coming after, after us. What's the name again? Bisola. Bisola. We are counting on you to change Nigeria. We have tried our best. And I'm happy that as we are always trying to give them, people like you are waking up and saying that no, you should not stand by to us, we gladly have you to I want to thank those who have supported you, people like Kada, to be this uh, book club, so a major platform and tool for awakening the female gender, the realities of what it means. That we can't do without thanking the pioneers in that field. Our own day, at license engineering, those who have been there. Um, for now, to be in the same way. You know, I always tell people, you miss out on 50% of the potential of the nation if you miss out on your women. I will not mention it anywhere. That's the reason why a part of this country is still lagging behind because 50% of, uh, of the population is not because of the Thank you very much, ma'am, for being here. So thank you everyone. Um, we're glad to be successful today. God bless you.